When you first launch Polyfontix, you will be greeted by a welcome window. You can use buttons in this window to register Polyfontix or to begin using the software in demo mode. You can build up to 10 sound banks in demo mode before you must register the software. The welcome window also displays a small purple button with a question mark on it. Click this button to open the Polyfontix user guide. You can also open the documentation from the help menu later. When you register Polyfontix, the welcome window will no longer display at launch. Let's use Polyfontix in demo mode. When you begin using Polyfontix for the first time, it opens a new document by default. A Polyfontix document contains the various elements that make up a sound bank. Because you can edit these elements, it is called the Document Editor, which you'll note is also in the title bar of the window. The Document Editor has three distinct lists, Instruments, Samples, and Library. The Instruments and Samples list are unique to each document. The Library list, on the other hand, is common to all documents. The items in the Library list also remain in the Library when you quit and restart Polyfontix. When you build a sound bank, the items in the library list will not become part of the sound font or downloadable sounds file. Only the items in the instruments and samples list become part of a sound bank. Because of the nature of sound banks, you may find yourself commonly working in a right to left fashion in Polyfontix. So we'll look at the library list first. The library is a repository for audio files, much like the library in iTunes. Just as in iTunes, you must have audio files in the library to burn a CD, you must have audio files in the Polyfontix library to build a sound bank. To add new files to the library, you can click the plus button beneath the library or simply drag them from the finder into the library. When you do so, Polyfontix imports the file and prepares it for use in a sound bank. You can audition files in the library by clicking the play button. To delete a file, select it and click the minus button. So, let's add a collection of samples to the library. Now that you have some audio files in the library, you can use them in a document sample list. To add an audio file to the samples list, drag the file from the library to the samples list. Or simply double click the library item. The Samples section of the Document Editor lists the audio samples that you want as part of a sound bank. An item in the Samples list represents one of the files from the library, as well as the collection of settings that apply to that sample. These settings can be adjusted with the Sample Editor by clicking the Edit button in the toolbar above the Samples list. To remove a sample, select it and click the Remove Sample button in the toolbar above the samples list. Once you've added all the samples that you want in your sound bank, you need to assign them to instruments, so let's move on to the instrument list. The Instruments section of the Document Editor lists all of the instruments that are part of a sound bank. An instrument has its own settings as well as a list of one or more samples that define the sound of the instrument. To create a new instrument, click the New button above the Instruments list. When you do, a sheet opens giving you the opportunity to name and adjust some basic settings for the instrument. You can give the instrument any name you wish or you can select from one of the general MIDI instrument names. 
Click OK to dismiss the new instrument sheet. You can adjust these instrument settings later in the instrument editor, which you open by clicking the edit button in the toolbar above the instruments list. When you create a new instrument, it has a red colored icon. Likewise, new samples have red colored icons. To add a sample to an instrument, select the instrument, select the sample, then click Add to Instrument in the toolbar. Or more simply, drag a sample to an instrument. When you add a sample to an instrument, both the sample and its parent instrument will display a black icon instead of a red one. This is an important distinction. You will be unable to build a sound bank so long as there are red instruments or samples in your document. The color red indicates that the sample or instrument is currently unused. Or to say it another way, you cannot build a sound bank if the document has unused instruments or samples. Once you have added samples to the document and assigned them to instruments, you can build a sound bank. Click the File Build Sound Bank menu item to open the build window. Name the sound bank and click the Build button to build the sound bank in sound font format and to have it installed in your user sound bank folder.